would you think we have a bit more volatility ahead of us? Oh, no doubt about it. You know, we certainly have. We've, uh, you know, it's been pretty, pretty devastating uh, fall in the last uh, few weeks. That's for sure. Since uh, since February, middle of February, isn't it funny that from the beginning of January, the ASX 200 has rallied like 550 points, and since then it's come back down 550 points to back to support again. So it's just below 7,000 at the moment, in fact, even less than where it was at the beginning of January. So, you know, no doubt this week with the Fed, uh, there's going to be some volatility in the commentary that comes out and the rate, um, obviously, we're expecting a, you know, 25 basis point rise. So, yeah, no doubt there's, um, there's still, uh, you know, I wonder if there's any skeletons in the closet out there to come out, you know. Yeah, I mean, we're consistently told that our banking system is very different here. But, Philip, you've been around for a while. You know, likely this Credit Suisse UBS uh, isn't the last skeleton in the closet. Look, it probably isn't. Uh, we've seen this movie before, and I did the analysis just for internal purposes, showing how our banking sector held up during previous economic shocks. Mm -hmm. It has held up better for good reasons. We have a very strong banking system. We have a very strong regulator. Mm -hmm. We have a more, I would say, a more organised market than, than other parts of the world. That doesn't help people. It doesn't help it calm people's nerves because there's always a, this time's going to be different. What do we know now? Or what's new that's different to the last time? So, we, so when you hear, you know, Silicon Valley Bank, maybe some people knew about them, maybe some people just everyone's heard of Credit Suisse. So when, when the bigger banks start to get into trouble, it, it generally makes people nervous and mm -hmm. it's almost a case of, well, I don't care how sold the Australian banking system is, do I need to be invested in the banking sector is a common discussion uh, people have at the moment and at the moment the fear versus greed argument. Fear is winning, share markets have been down, um, even though our fundamentals remain sound, uh, much better than the other side of the world. Yeah. People are going to want to see some evidence before um, racing back into equity markets, I think. Yeah, no, I just read some interesting statistics. Like in the US, you've got 4,500 regional banks. We've got here a total of 97, which including the four big ones, which including FinTech and all the other ones. So, you know, um, we're not exposed to these cocoa bonds that uh, yeah. just uh, Credit Suisse uh, that uh, were issued. Um, you know, amazing if investors take it. You know, it's always the case, isn't it? Like. We've got a zero rate environment when we had that, the risk profile goes up dramatically and of course that changes when interest rates are moving up. The good news is I think if there's any light at the end of the tunnel is you're starting to see bond yields come down yeah. and so inflationary pressures are moving down with the, with especially with energy costs and oil in particular, also easing. So that will ease off I think the inflationary pressures and you could see a pause in, pause in interest rate rises. For, you know, we'll see this week with what the Fed says, but I think that's the case, which will give investors some confidence. Well, I think that's the hope. There, there is the view internally is that if the Fed pauses, are they pausing because, oh no, there's something wrong, we need to pause. Uh, so we've, we've stopped looking at inflation, we're now looking at a, a meltdown. So it's almost like you want the Fed to raise by 25 bips to say, we're still focused on inflation, that problem is isolated, it's business yeah. as usual for us, because if they yeah. start, getting more defensive that oh, might, yeah. might do more harm than good. Yeah, I agree. Look, guys, I wish we could sit and talk about this uh, for <laughs> ages, but we do have a list of stocks to get to. And I had a viewer, a regular viewer, I should say, email this morning and say, instead of doing a stock of the day related to news, why don't we ask the guys for what they would buy if this market pulls back more significantly? So with that in mind, I'll run you through the companies that we'll talk about to start, and that will be Atlantic Lithium, Credit Corp, Future Generation Global, Southern Cross Electrical, and Grange Resources. But to my earlier point, let's get a stock from both of my guests. They've had a few moments to think about it. Uh, what would you buy, Philip, if we did see a big, a more significant pullback? Look, if it had to be a stock as opposed to cash, because obviously we're finally getting a return on our cash investments, it has to be a gold stock. Um, we're finally seeing the flight of quality that isn't flight to safety that isn't Bitcoin and it's on people's minds. Gold is getting back to where it would normally be in times of uncertainty around the $2,000 uh, an ounce. Um, you want a, a large liquid gold producer, Australian based that pays a small dividend. For me that's Northern Star. It's, uh, its market cap is over 12 and a half bill before this morning. It's up again today, pays a small dividend. 
you'd expect the if this volatility continues, the Aussie uh, the US dollar gold price to keep rallying. And if the Aussie dollar continues to weaken, I think it's at 67 cents as of this morning, that's a double positive. So gold companies are probably a good diversifier in normal conditions anyway. In times of excess volatility, as we have at the moment, you've got to own a large liquid gold company. And for me, it's uh, Northern Star.